You are listening to an All Games Radio Network broadcast of AllGames.com. Hi, this is Normie from Knuckleballer Radio and Zombie Cast, and you're listening to one of my favorite shows on the Geeky Antics Network. Don't forget to check out the rest of the gang over at geekyantics.net. Warning, there might be rants and food ahead and possibly inappropriate behavior. Don't tell anybody, though. Welcome, geeks, gamers, furries, and ninja robots. This is Horseplay Live. And today is Friday, October 27th. And this is episode 2002 of Horseplay. Episode 2002. 202. Wow, I'm jumping ahead. Many, many years in the future. And we're calling this one The Poop and Doocy Zipper. <clears throat> yep. It's pretty appropriate. It's pretty appropriate we'll get to that. And uh, subtitle, what five bucks gets you. <laughs> we'll get to that. It'll all make sense in a bit, hopefully. Anywho, I'm your bald bear lizard host, Yogi Zilla. And tonight, it is likely just us, you and I. Here to talk things, all, all the things, you know, all the things. Geeky, random, and silly. And we're continuing our, our three-year, 200-plus uh, episode celebration. You know, it's a mild celebration. We're not going too crazy, you know. Priorities have shifted. People are busy. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's tough to commit to anything these days. Even a podcast that's under an hour. <laughs> so I get it. I get it. I'm not bitter about it. You know, but we're here. We're still we're still we're still on the grind. Uh, and, and it's nice to still get the the tweets and uh, private messages and. All that fun stuff, let us know that people are listening, they're out there, uh, the downloads keep going up, so everyone's lurking, that's better than nothing, right? By the way, speaking of lurkers, we do this show live every Thursday night, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, 4 a.m. GMT, GMT slash BT, over at Twitch TV forward slash Geeky Antics, so p- please uh, join us there. <clears throat> we also have the live chat over at geekyantics.net forward slash Discord. And early in the day at 5 p.m. Eastern, over at allgames.com, you cast Horde Play replay uh, reruns. Uh, allgames.com, 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, though I haven't ch- been checking lately, they're still running that. They may not even be doing it. But you know what? There'll be something at 5 p.m. worth listening to. So make sure you tune in. Um, just some quick public service announcements and uncomfortable type things, you know. The Puerto Rico situation, um, still pretty rough, but, uh, you know, they're not in the clear over there, but, uh, you know, things are looking a little better. Uh, fortunately, my family and my friends out there have been hit as hard as some others. But, you know, just please, you know, give me your prayers, give me your, your thoughts. If you can help out some way, if you think about doing so. And, uh, just remember, you know, we're our neighbor's keepers. Uh, I think the mentality that, that's been prevalent about everyone just looking out for themselves, I think that paradigm is going to shift pretty soon because um, it needs to, you know. Um, if we can't look out for each other, who do you think is going to? The government? You know? Your, your, your job? Your company? Eh, possibly. But uh, most of us don't have that situation, so it's the, it's the community, the immediate community has to look out for each other, your neighbors, you know, your, your fellow churchgoers, you know, uh, people you get together with in mastermind groups, 
you know, if you're not doing any of that stuff, uh, consider it, you know. And I'm reminding myself because, you know, since I might go into hermit mode, uh, get, put the blinders on and get into hustle and bustle of the everyday life and kind of just, you know, go into autopilot, right? We all, we're all guilty of it. Um, we talked about, uh, for a couple of weeks, we were talking about the Equifax.com uh, offering uh, due to the breach of Equifax. So you can now get, uh, for another year or so, I think, um, they're offering free security checks and um, on a, tr a trusted ID credit monitoring service. This gives you a real deep three credit bureau report, real time monitoring that you lock your credit report, uh, your credit file rather. It's got a whole slew of things, super useful. It's free, get it. Um, awareness is key, right? If you know, if you're just coasting by, you're just leaving things up to chance. Um, and on the IT side, there's been that big Wi-Fi alert and everyone's kind of jumping on the bandwagon uh, and all the antivirus providers are kind of letting people know about the uh, password um, exploit. So if you are basically, long story short, if you're on WPA, WPA2 for authentication, uh, your network is not secure, so you may want to consider um, hardening your system. So, for residential people, probably not a huge thing, right? But um, for small office, home office type scenarios and up, uh, something you should be aware of. And there's plenty of security bullets out there you can look at. Yeah, they'll give you some uh, some next steps on how to resolve that. Especially you just want to change your authentication type and uh, maybe do some patching. Um, so, this is going to be a short show. I got a long day tomorrow. I'm going to be, I volunteered for an occupational summit uh, through the Richmond Board of Education. Uh, we're partnering up with Richmond Board of Education to develop um, a talent pool and give back to the community. Um, in the logistics industry, what's interesting is it's a massive industry. It's only gonna keep growing. And we're in a place right now where there's actually a shortage of talent, believe it or not, um, which is interesting. I mean, yeah, unemployment is at an all-time low, well, all-time for the past uh, 10 years. Uh, it's been lower, right? Um, I think it's the lowest it's been in 10 years, which is very encouraging, at least the last time I checked. Um, but it's still a lot of unfilled jobs, and there's actually a growing trend where People do not want to work, um, and the whole business with uh, content creation and streaming is part of that. You know, people make just enough money to cover their bills. They shack up with like ten other people, and they have no responsibilities. Right? That's the life, right? You just eat pizza and drink beer and play video games all day and streaming. Right? Um, that's fine. You know, if that's the life you want to live, but if you want something more stable with um, longevity. I definitely uh, recommend people looking at uh, logistics industry and supply chain management. I'll be doing more speaking engagements, and uh, I'll be more well-rested and prepared so I won't stutter and mess up like I do on this show. Um, I'm actually pretty good at the corporate training, education, tutoring stuff, you know. Um, not to toot my own horn, but, you know, I had some experience. Um, and I'm excited about this. Uh, this is going to be high school students. So, a little scary because, you know, uh, times have changed. You know, the respect for authority figures has all but disappeared, I would say. Um, but I'm excited about it. I think, uh, you know, one of the key themes I'm going to rein in on is uh, the importance of moving beyond the mentality that revolves around things, right? So, you know, you, talk, you hear a lot about dreaming bigger. If you do any kind of personal development, you've heard that, that concept before. It's not rocket science, right? But it's true. People have forgotten how to dream. Some people do not dream at all. They're just they're on autopilot. They're just surviving, not thriving, right? And then if they do dream, they don't know how to convert those dreams into goals and making them actionable. You know, they can't plan it and actually create the opportunity or... or identify the opportunities 
Or worse, the dreams that just revolve around things, right? Dreams that revolve around things are not the best because things get broken, stolen, they depreciate, and eventually you're just collecting stuff. And there's, there's value in, in things, the things, the experiences that things can help facilitate, right? But it shouldn't be the end goal. You know, so a lot of times you hear, oh, I, I, I dream of having a... An expensive sports car, or you know, um, you know, really nice sneakers, uh, you know. Then, then if you look at things, they still revolve about things, but a little more about quality of life. Like, uh, I, I'd, I'd love to have a real, a proper Christmas. You know, that's a, a humble, simple dream that actually means a lot. What does that look like to you? The kind of traditions that you share. You know, and the festivities around it, right? Um, you know, and then people, th you know, the big number one dream that I think everyone has is, is owning a home, right? Um, a lot of folks, that, even people, folks that have a home, uh, their own house, you know, maybe it's not the house that they really want. You might be in a trailer or you might be in a small house and something you just kind of jumped into. And now you're like, no, this isn't home. This is home for now, but this isn't where home will be for generations to come. You want maybe you want a multi family home where you could just see generations living together and sharing and collaborating, right? Um it's another thing that, that you know, society's kinda of moved away from, at least in in the States, right? Um, where you had grandma and great grandpa and all the folks just sharing together, uh I feel there's some there's value in that. Um that's kind of what I'm going to focus focus on is some of the, these pillars, and really creating a, a purpose-driven life and 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 having deliberate direction for your career. So you know, focusing on quality of life, communication, and teamwork. You know, I think those are all things that if you really focus on what those things mean, it'll make you a lot more marketable, and it just improves your relationships across the board. So look, really looking forward to that. That's why uh, you know I'm being responsible. I'm gonna get to bed uh, extra early, so at least I can try to sleep earlier. You know, I go, you go to bed, but you don't fall asleep right away, right? So I do want to get to bed, and then uh, I take that responsibility very seriously. Uh, super excited to meet some of the future leaders of, of the world, right? Um, on fun stuff, uh, we catch you up on, on some TV. I'd be curious to hear what, what y'all are thinking so far about this fall season. I still have so much catching up to do, even some of the stuff from last season. Gosh, uh, I'm caught up on Lucifer. Flash, I'm almost caught up on. Gotham, I'm caught up on. Need to catch up on Arrow. DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, the Walking Dead. Um, and I just saw a funny video. Samuel L. Jackson explains Game of Thrones and made me realize... We're still two years out from Game of Thrones, so that means we have more time to catch up on everything else. Uh, and I know there's some other shows that I'm not caught up on. Oh, um, crap, what's the show that just started back up? Riverdale, the show based on Archie, on the Archie comic universe, uh, something from my youth. Uh, that's actually very near and dear to me. Uh, and I still I still collect the Archie comics every now and then. You know, it's like, it's like uh, comfort food of sorts. Uh, it has gotten a lot more serious and darker at times. So this shows, uh, it's interesting. I think Riverdale shows how things, the tone of things have changed so much. There's a lot of, I guess we embrace drama a lot more. It's less happy-go-lucky and more about just the, the human drama of, of everything, right? Uh, it's the only way I could describe it, really. Um, right now, pretty much uh, throughout the United States, it's a uh, fair time, you know, uh, you got your state fairs, your local fairs, and you know, I, I actually really love this time of the year, um, weather cools down, down south, but it's still pleasant, nice sunny weather, you know, um, you know, you got Halloween, then Thanksgiving, then Christmas, right, all the, the weight, the wonderful smells in the, in the air, you got your, Apple pie, pecan pie, you know, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, hot cocoa, pumpkin this, pumpkin that, right? 
um, I don't know, there's something very uplifting to me about it. Um, you, you, you think about spring as the time where everybody kind of bounces back and gets out of the funk, right? I don't know, this, this, this time I really like, even though it, it tends to be an expensive time when you're, you know, a parent and you have, you know, more gifts to think about and whatnot. It can be stressful, I get it, you know, and then you're right around the corner from tax season. And that part sucks. But uh, if you just get lost in the moment, just live, live in the moment, it's just there's so much um, fun to be had, right? And also, I think since it's, it's cooler weather, people spend a little more time indoors. So there's more opportunity to have um, gatherings in the home, right? And um, and that's a big thing, right? You just can't invite anyone to your home, Um but when you do it, it's especially you're opening up to, to other people. Um, and entertaining, entertaining guests can be a really fun thing, right? Uh, it forces you to clean more than you might normally, all right, and be more organized. You think about, oh, man, you know. And it kind of forces you to kind of think about what you're projecting. And you're like, if there's something you're uncomfortable with, it, it tells you a lot, well, maybe this is something I need to change, you know. Maybe this is something I, that I need to work on. Um so, you know, that vulnerability is important and sharing and we find more common ground like that. There's more people going through the same struggles than we'd like to admit, right? We're all kind of keeping to ourselves um, and we're unaware of that, those struggles. But, uh, yeah, I love, I love, I love the fairs. I mean, it's got me thinking about a lot of things. First of all, railways are cool because, you know, you have a uh, straits is one of the big um, carny operations that kind of travels throughout um i think they're strictly southeast i could be wrong no actually i feel they go coast to coast if i'm not mistaken but but the thing that's interesting is they travel strictly by rail railway and it just makes you think about how fascinating you know a lot of the railroads we have are super old right you're talking about you know early 1900s early 1800s maybe you know it's just it's just you know, some rail systems are even older than that. Um, you know, almost as old as our nation, and this crazy. You know, they had, they've been, been been maintained and updated, right? But this old infrastructure that still is super relevant, and I think could be used in so many more ways. Um, you know, you think about a trolley system. We have a trolley that travels downtown, and it doesn't go to many places. But it's just really neat just seeing trolleys. Um, it's a, it's a fun way to get around, shuttle folks around, right? Um, buses tend to have longer routes and more stops, where trolleys can tend to travel tend to travel more direct with less um, interference because you know they they travel over the railway. Um, that's another thing I think about. You know, trains as a you know transportation system just for humans. Not just, you know, cargo, but for humans, uh, it's really effective because, again, uh, not as direct as, as a plane, right? Can't travel the crow's path, but, you know, the traffic has to halt for you, and you keep going on. And uh, traveling by train is cool. You get to see a lot more and really experience where you're traveling through, whereas a plane, everything just looks really tiny, and it's cool. But uh, traveling by train, I feel like, you really get a sense for where you're going through. I mean, obviously, bus probably immerses you even more. Um, but I, I like trains a lot. But uh, so the fair, and so not just the get me thinking about um, the railways, but you know, think about how much things have changed in just a few years. And uh, to look at it, uh, you know, to, what five dollars gets you today. I remember when I was going to fair, like, you, you could get things for a dollar you could get things for quarters you know good luck with that now um you know it's expensive when you have a big family uh we spend at least two hundred dollars and that's with the company paying it was employee appreciation day our company uh was gracious enough to buy oh well over and i lost track how many but it was well over 500 tickets so that's for the employees and their family their immediate family and you know you're looking at uh, for advanced tickets twenty dollars a pop for unlimited rides, uh, just, a, just a ride, and that doesn't count for all rides. The premium stuff, you know, like bungee jumping, and 
trampolines or rock climbing that's separate um and then 25 dollars at the door for those same tickets uh advanced tickets for general admission was like four bucks two bucks and then at the door at the gate six bucks just to walk around and then you know every game pretty every game every game we played was five dollars a person uh per round and you know you think about it like, that really adds up you play 10 games 50 bucks right there um you know so not the best business model i, I you know me personally i would think it'd be better to have charge less or have bulk pricing if you have more people playing it gets cheaper per person so it's less exclusive and you can involve more people and keep your stands busy right because the, the you know crowds attract crowds people see empty stands it's just a bad signal you know and so you know it's just anyway so oh, those games are rigged and then to an extent they are but you know we won stuff when my wife uh couple of toys she wanted i killed it on the, on the darts i only missed one balloon and then just freaking bounced off the darn balloon i'm like damn that's embarrassing i didn't put enough zip in it um and you know the thing with those things they they uh, uh they under inflate the balloons so they are more bouncy um less volatile uh we tried the little bottle fishing game, and it looks really easy. And I told her, I told all my kids, I told my wife, I said, "Look, it looks a lot easier than it is. All you gotta do is put it around the bottle and pull it up, pull it up." I said, "Yeah, but you have to keep it steady, and you have to put just the right motion when you pull it. You have to pull up just at the right time, and you have to kind of be fast but slow at the same time. It's, it's really weird, right? So I figured out the trick was to get the 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 little hoop around." the brim of the bottle so it's it's kind of lodged between the, the lips on there but even with that if you're not you don't have a steady hand if you're not lined up just right you know your the bottle swaying side to side it falls off the table you're done and if it turns around standing it up is almost impossible um but the you know, guy was nice enough to let you retry you know if you kept it on the table um but yeah it's like a crackheaded version of fishing um and again, at five dollars a pop, you don't feel like retrying, you know. But if it's a dollar, you know, you you feel more encouraged to try more, right? Um, and of course, the guys that work the stand make it all look easy. Uh, we shot some hoops. That's always a fun one. The water gun, I was like, um, that they really still do a bad job of letting you know which ones are in bad are not in working condition. So you really got to pay attention to make sure everything's working, triggers and joints and all that stuff. Um, otherwise, you'll sit at a place where you have no chance to win. Um, you know, can they run these these stands to the ground too? It's not. I don't think they're always trying to purposely bamboozle people. See, I like I like the the games at the fair. Um, the rides are great too. We did a lot of the rides. Of course, we did a zipper. And uh, that is a poop-inducing, perhaps vomit-inducing thing. For me, it was more, I got a real workout, because uh, even with that bar in front of you and being locked in a cage, you're still rattling around in there. And when it suspends you, like, temporarily upside down, you're facing down to the ground, you know, several feet below you, um, you know, you're at the peak of the, of the turn. Uh, you know, your, your your face is like crushed up against the ca cage unless you kind of do little push-ups. You know, um, you know, you're kind of just pushing up against the cage so you don't rattle around in there. Um, but that that one's probably probably still one of the, the scariest one. Uh, Avalanche to me doesn't do anything. Uh, they got the swings that go up really high. That's a little scary, especially the one that goes up like I don't know what is it, 30, 40 feet. And swings you around really hard. It's the height more than the, the motion. And I find it scarier when it's coming down than when it's spinning you really hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my wife kind of lost it on that one. Yeah, what else? Uh, I forgot a lot of the rides. Of course, you have the force, the UFO ride that spins you around. And the centrifugal, is that, is that what it's called? Centrifugal force. Um keeps you stuck to the wall and then you get lifted up um 
That's always a neat treat. I never get bored of that. Did I do the pirate ship this year? I just kind of whipped, and then uh, I didn't want to be that guy that ate it a lot and then ended up getting sick on the ride because I ate too much and I'm being bounced around. So I uh, called it quits. I, I didn't do the hamster wheel. Uh, the kids did that. Um, but did, we did a good ride. We definitely got the unlimited rides worth. Had a great little uh, picnic in the. Well, not, I guess you can't really call it a picnic because it's too big of a scare, right? Picnic has to be a small group, but we had a nice tent, you know, set up for the team, and uh, we all ate together as a, as a company. Um, it, it really felt like you were, we were amongst family. You know, of course, you know, there's those little groups and stuff because, you know, people kind of keep to themselves, uh, comfort level and all that. I get that, but uh, everybody was friendly, and it's cool. Got to introduce my small army to some folks. They're like, are these all yours? I'm like, yep. <laughs> you know, I got a baby face, so everyone assumes I'm like 20-something. Like, Jesus, I wish. Um, I sound young, too, but, uh, you know, I guess it's like, good genes. I, I can thank my mama for that. Uh, my pops always look old from as long, for as long as I can remember. My mama... She still looks the way I always remember her being. She uh, never changes, you know. Good genes on that side of the family. At least for the women. Uh, I mean, I'm part woman. Who knows? Um, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Um, let's say I want to keep this short. I mean, there's, plenty, there's always plenty to talk about. But um, what I would like to do is invite you to join us in places where we could keep talking. Uh, of course, Discord, free chat server, geekyanswers.net forward slash Discord. Uh, we'll chat there around the clock. Uh, that's usually where we kind of round people up to play games, uh, Destiny and whatnot. Um, you know, Fortnite, and we'll Six Siege. I might even get back into Battleborn. I want to play some Mass Effect Andromeda online. I know it's old already by, by gamer standards, but I like getting the most out of my games. So if you're interested in playing that, let me know. Um, of course, you can find me on Twitter at YogiZilla. Uh, we have the network account at Geeky Antics. Uh, tons of Facebook groups and pages. If you just look up Geeky Antics, and that's G E E K Y A N T I C S. Not Geekly, not uh, Geek We, or, and it's not Ant, ant or. Antarx, I don't know, I've seen some weird stuff, it's like, gosh, have we just become that illiterate as a, as a society, I don't know, uh, but I guess it is a tricky word, you don't, you don't really use that oft, as often, I mean, shenanigans, I guess people might know, but that's a, that's a mouthful, right, geeky shenanigans, that's, that's originally what I was thinking about naming us, and I was like, yeah, people really won't know how to spell that, and then it's a mouthful too, so you got two syllables here, ant, you know how to spell ant, and I and I I C S and not too bad. I guess you can, it's understandable if someone thinks a K in there. Uh, you know, yeah, I can let that one slide. Um, you know, another thought: tigers are just big cats. And I'm sure, everyone's aware of that already. But I just love watching them. And you feel kind of bad at seeing that animals in captivity. But uh, it's just uh, this one cat, this white tiger, at the fair. It was just so sweet, trying to be playful. She's enjoying her scratching post and uh, having a good old time following. Wa wa she was watching the people walking by as much as anyone else, and she was prowling, but playfully prowling. It wasn't like, I'm going to get you. Uh, She's just being silly. Uh, it was pretty cool. Um, elephants were dancing, like swaying side to side in unison. They were feeding each other. And this was before they even started doing any show. They were just kind of chilling in their little waiting areas. So anyway, I love the fair. Uh, if you have, you know, if you have a fair experience, you know, I'd like to know what does your local fair look like or your state fair? How far do you have to travel for that? Uh, let us know at mail at geekyantics.net. And, of course, you can leave us voicemail or text us at 646-801-2149. And, of course, we're still doing a Kelly versus Kelly uh, informal vote. I really need to get a poll up. Um, so I'm going to note for myself here. You poll 
at geekyantics.net. Uh, again, geekyantics.net, there'll be an article there, hopefully this weekend. Um, just been, time's just been going so fast. By the next thing you know, it's going to be 2018. Gosh, it's been a productive year, but man, it's like sometimes you just blink and the day's gone, right? I know that, do you feel that way? Let, let us know, you know, if you can relate, holler. Uh, and of course, the Kelly, you know, hashtag, hashtag Kelly versus Kelly vote. It's uh, Kelly Bundy versus Kelly Kapowski. And if you're old enough to at least know who they are, we can be friends. If not, we can still be friends, but I might have to ask for your parents' permission first so I'm not the creepy old guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, and I, to this day, I still like cheesy shows and cartoons. Cartoons, I think, are timeless. You know. I especially like the older stuff. Right, see, I'm reminiscing again. Um, yeah, I, I started quoting some Hanna Barbera cartoons, and it's funny when I quote, you know, just random quotes, and how many people just did not get it. I'm like, man, I'm getting to that point where it's like, especially online, where like I'm the odd bird, you know, and of course, sixty percent of the workforce is now millennials. I'm out of my place. I might, I might, I might just retire soon. Maybe I'll just uh, run a ice cream parlor or something. You know, you know I need a chill job I could do in my retirement because you know no one can really fully retire these days, not in this economy, unless you're really smart and started saving when you were like, uh, you know, late teens or something, <laughs> or you just make a buttload of money and save every di damn dime and have no kids. And no responsibilities. What's that? One, less than one percent of the world. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Anyway, feel free to connect. I hope to hear from you all. Um, again, you know, uh, this show it will get better with your feedback. I, I love, you know, doing things like looking at Ask FM and, and reading the questions people ask. You know, reading the voicemail messages. Oh, and of course, Beard comes in now, and I'm about to wrap up. I was just listening to you uh, doing the closing line. And I'm like, I shouldn't hop in now. Nice. I figured I'd come and just. I figured I'd just come and say hi. Aw, that's so sweet. I try. I, I was just going over the different ways that we'd like to have people interact with us. So not just uh, come about to our us. Discord. Yeah, Discord is always good. Come to come to Discord. Come hang out. Twitter works. Yeah, I'm always there. At Beard and Hat. Yep. Cause... Yeah. Come, come, come hang out. We'd love to, love to hear from you. Love to talk to you guys. I also like surveys. I don't know. Do you like surveys? Like no. fun, like fun ones. Not like the kind of surveys you get from consumer panels, you know, where they say it's a quick survey and then it ends up taking like 20, 30 minutes. I mean like a quick poll maybe, you know? No. No? No, I'm not a fan. Man. The only time I'll fill those out is if now nah, the only I've only filled out one in the last year. That was because the cashier at Wendy's, who I go there, me and my son every week go there after we go to story time at the library, and then we go to Wendy's and have chicken nuggets, and then we come home and he takes his nap. The people there are fantastic, and she asked me to fill out a survey and give them the highest rating that I could, and I was happy to oblige. Other than that, no, I won't do a survey. I think we should make it a, distinguish a poll from a survey, though, because a poll is usually, like, one question and, like, a few radio options, you know? You pick one radio button, right? You click on the radio button, you're done. That's too yeah. much? That's too much for you? Eh, even that's a little, uh... <laughs> If I don't care, I just do not care and will not participate. Mm, well, you have to at least care about the ongoing battle between cake and pie. The thing's still it's getting It's always close. pie. <laughs> it's, it's always pie, and you're always wrong if you think otherwise. Unless, <laughs> here's the one caveat there, cheesecake. Yeah, that's, that's part of the reason I went for cake. But one type of cake does not eliminate the fact that almost every other type of pie is 
far superior. Except Pumpkin. Fuck that. Ah, oh, man, I was just talking about earlier about how I love this season and pu- all the Pumpkin stuff. Nope. Not me. Yeah, you're one of them. <laughs> you don't even like the way it smells? Like, you don't like the smell of Pumpkin Spice? Pumpkin Spice is just like cinnamon and nutmeg. I'm cool with that. Yes, yeah, true. But pumpkin itself. Like the actual pumpkin? No. No. And you got all these like scented things. Like how about apple pie? Well, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out. My grandmother took her apple pie recipe to the grave with her. My <laughs> grandfather my grandfather's close. My mom's is also close. But she took whatever secrets she had for making the crust of that thing. She took the, that to the grave with her. I, I can't figure it out. Crust is the hardest part. That's the problem with pie. So many people fuck up the, pot, the crust. They burn it or it has no flavor. You know? Yeah, you get the store-bought stuff, but it ain't the same as making homemade. And, uh... See, I might be a little spoiled because I live in New England where there are more apple orchards than... I don't know. I've lost whatever analogy I was going for, but there's a whole shit ton of them. <laughs> yeah. And you can buy you can buy fresh apple pies from there. You're going to pay $15 for it, but it's worth it. Oh yeah. Totally. I'll spend 45, 60 bucks on pies before I go to any Thanksgiving engagement. <laughs> Uh, so how about sugar cookie? Like, do you like the sugar cookie scent, like in candles and stuff? I can't do candle scents because whatever they put in there, I'm allergic to. Ah, oh, shit! Yeah, like almost all, almost all scents that exist, like even with with the oils. Yeah, oils. Even as far as like deodorants and perfumes and colognes, there's only like two two deodorants that I can use and uh, like maybe three shampoos tops wait which deodorants Otherwise, are they by out of curiosity uh, it's Old Spice mm-hmm. you know what you know what I think it is the uh, aluminum is it aluminum zytite they put in there mm-hmm. that's like in all the deodorants except for Old Spice that might be part of it. Which they supposedly say that is a contributor to Alzheimer's. I don't buy that. But yeah, I noticed that too. It's less harsh. Oh, I get I get migraines from when I go to the uh, when I go to the gym. I don't change at the gym anymore. I oh, will go. Can people spray down my... the axe and all that stuff? Yeah, I can't. I can't do it. Like, I couldn't figure out in high school, I would have migraines constantly. Like, just weekly. It was to the point where they were uh, studying me for, see if I had uh, cluster headaches. Dude, so you, know, it was just... so you can't go through, like, a Macy's and go through, like, the cosmetic area. They, they would kill the you. Most... <laughs> There's one brand that my wife uses of perfume that doesn't kill me. And I will go and I'll buy that and I leave. Like I'll go in there, purchase that for her and leave. That's the, the best I can do. I guess they got them better now, but remember when you used to go through there and they were like spray you without your permission? Like, hey, try this new scent. Tss, tss. And it's like all these scents be like being like ambushed by these like well-dressed sharks, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was... I don't remember when they stopped doing that, but it's much appreciated. Yeah, it used to be pretty bad. I guess yeah. a big part of it was, you know, a lot of retail places used to pay good commission. Now, those margins are pretty much gone, right? So I don't even think they pay commissions for that stuff anymore. I think it's just base pay at this point because yeah. people stopped buying that there and just ordered it online. Yep. 
But that said, I, I, I still say that retail is not going anywhere anytime soon. It's going to change, it's but it's not going to go anywhere. Until when it dies, or when it will die, is when Walmart and Amazon decide to stop fucking around and do four-hour delivery time. <laughs> because I can order groceries right now. Well, not right now. Theoretically, if it was noon and I ordered groceries, it would be at, they would be at my house three to four hours later. Yeah. Yeah. And even if... I've been saying it for a while now. I'm like, how many people are within a four-hour drive of a Walmart? It's got to be quite a good percentage of the population. At least uh, in the south. Up north... I, I find there's a lot more distance between the Walmarts. Here, there's, like, so many Walmarts. Like, by me, I have at least six Walmarts that are within reasonable driving distance. Within a four-hour drive of me, though, is New York City and Boston. Mm. So there's bound to be plenty of Walmarts there. Amazon only exists because Walmart still lets it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'd be a fun little thing to do like maybe get everyone involved in like just figuring out how many Walmarts they have within I don't know the 10 mile radius or we could maybe be a little more generous 100 mile radius yeah, 100 mile radius would be like a two and a half hour drive yeah so I mean that I I don't know why Walmart hasn't done it yet. And now they're going to do it. And I won't get any credit for it. <laughs> I mean, realistically. If you have everything that's in your store. That's basically just a warehouse. You send a courier out with the stuff. Boom. Done. Problem solved. Yeah. Bigger stuff. You have an actual warehouse like a Costco's or something. Maybe, up, maybe I, I should broker this deal and like say, hey, run a pilot program through us in the Southeast because we're a 3PL. We can make it happen. Wink. <laughs> Look, if you can do that, I will take a 11% commission for my idea. <laughs> that seems fair. I mean, this seems like a million dollar idea. Yeah. You'd be surprised though with the with the logistics. Like, uh, there's so many middlemen that like the margins are killed. You unless you a, start cutting you out is people. A, all you need is a courier. There's a. I work in IT. You know that. Maybe the audience knows that. Now they. When a drive goes bad, there's a courier company that will bring me one of the drives that I need. Mm-hmm. At any time, day or night. So these courier companies exist. Why? Well, you know, it's interesting. Couriers are more popular in the Northeast. You go to other places, it's not as big of a thing. Which is why I think one of the reasons why, what was it, uh, Cosmos? And what was it, Urban Fetch? Remember those? Where they will like deliver anything you wanted. Yeah, there's a, a couple of, uh, Postmates. Postmates does it. Well, I'm talking about it's, the originals that did it. Well, there's one. There's one that's still active now. Postmates. I think that's what it's called. We just order random stuff. Like, I want a Ben and Jerry, a pint of Ben and Jerry's, uh, fish food, a co some corduroy pants, a sweatband, and a chia pet. <laughs> Yeah, it's Postmates. They'll do. They'll pick up anything and bring it to you. I'd make them order like the. I'd make them bring like the most awkward stuff possible. I'd be like, "Can you bring me uh, a, a black dildo, preferably floppy? Um, I want it veiny and at least nine inches. Thank you. Oh, and some lube, and some chocolate, and Crisco. Don't ask." <laughs> and uh, four for four from Wendy's. <laughs> but why did you get the Wendy's last? 
<laughs> I'm, I'm gonna work up an appetite. I want the Wendy's, Wendy's to still be warm, though. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be great if he actually goes into the Wendy's with the awkward items that are not discreetly packaged. <laughs> well, of course not. Uh, oh, man, that'd be fantastic. Mm. See, see what happens, folks. When you get me and Beer together, we we completely go off the rails. <laughs> I'm I'm willing to say that this show never had rails to begin with. It's like a bowling lane that there's uh the gutter, and it's the rails uh there's rails by the gutter, but that still gives us a lot of wiggle room. <laughs> yeah, the rails are optional. Yeah, they are optional. Yep, definitely optional. You know. I kind of like bowling with the with the little rails up. Because you can just do silly things like bounce the ball around. <laughs> I put a bowling ball into the ceiling. Oh my god! <laughs> I have this awkward way of bowling that works 80% of the time. When I bowl, the ball doesn't touch the lane until it gets about a half to two-thirds of the way down the lane. So you kind of throw it. You lob it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It gets a nice arc to it. Yeah. If you catch it, if you catch it the right way, if your shoulder isn't slightly to the left or to the right, you'll hit that head on. Boom. Strike. Or at least you'll pick up an easy spare. I noticed a lot One of time. a lot of folks do that. Um, the bad bowlers do. <laughs> well, I say I must be the worst then, because uh, I bowl um, overhand. <laughs> People are like, "What the hell?" But it works for me, and it feels comfortable for me. Friend of mine gets a running start, and then comes out the lane completely, completely chest first, slides on his feet, and rolls the ball between his legs. Nice. Behind him. I like it. And I've seen him bowl more strikes with that than you can imagine. Yeah. It's what you get used to, really. This is an interesting thing because really, like, you know, I think we talked about this before and then I'm getting deja vu, but it's all in the approach. Like, the approach is everything in bowling. If it's fluid and you have it to a point where you don't have to think about it anymore, then you're good. But if it's awkward and you're kind of, like, counting steps and, like, you're like, no, this ain't right, and get stood over. Like, get, it is like a, a cadence to it, you know? Yeah. And it, it also has a lot to do with the uh, wrist and shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Steam's opening up. I don't need to be downloading all this stuff right now. Pause. The wrist is a scary part because if you don't have good wrist control, you end up hurting yourself really bad. Um, or at least being really sore. <laughs> That's always what happens after bowling. I always just feel like that was just a bad idea. Why did <laughs> my arms hurt now? I'm tired. Uh, for the next three days, like I really shouldn't have been using a 15 pound ball, throwing it down the lane. Yeah. What was I thinking? Yeah, if you're gonna be throwing it, I, I would go like a 12, maybe even a 10. That's how I ended up putting one into the ceiling. Oh, shit, because you overcompensated. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh, when man. You think, when you think you're throwing, like, a 16-pound ball and you only have, like, a 10-pounder in your hand, that thing's a shot put. Yeah. Five pounds makes all the difference. Uh, I, 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 I will switch a lot. If I'm, like, not getting in the groove, I'll switch the weights. Sometimes I'll bowl with 15 Sometimes I bowl with a 13, so then I go really lightweight, depending on how I'm feeling. But, uh. Bowling's the only game you can play that you can suck at and still have fun. You know, I think I had to agree. It's the only one. It's over quick, right? <laughs> Not even so much that it's over quick, it's just it's still, it's still fun even if you're garbage. Yeah. Because you're never the only one who sucks. Yeah, that's true. Unless and, it's only two people. And the thing about it too is, uh, just the, you know, the taking turns. It, it kind of gives you time to reevaluate stuff, hang out, 
drink some beer, grab a snack. Question your life choices. <laughs> question your life choices. That too. You know. It's, it's, it's chill. I like bowling. It's good times. Yeah. So have you had a chance just catching up? Any games this past week or two you've been uh, actually playing? <laughs> the answer will still make you sad. The only thing I've played is, it is just Destiny, Destiny and Cuphead. That's it. Well, Hearthstone, but I don't even think about mobile games. Like you know, I, I should mention them, but it's like you know, Gems of War. Hearthstone counts. Hearthstone. Most of the other ones don't. Yeah. Like that's 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 just that's, like Hearthstone's just my daily routine. Like that's usually when I'm playing when I have a cup of coffee and I'm sitting out on my patio. You know, um, it might be. Yeah, I made. I made the mistake of deleting all of my decks. Oh. And I don't have the uh, patience to go back in and rebuild them right now. So I haven't played that in a while. I should. I can play that at work. Well, their deck builder, their wizard is pretty good. Because like, you can use their recipes and then just swap out what you don't like. So I like that. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta take a look at what I have. I haven't, I haven't been on in a couple of weeks at least. Oh man, they have the Halloween oh. the Halloween event. Thanks for reminding me. So make sure you play Hearthstone this week. The Halloween event's taking place this week. Hopefully they extend it through next week. Um, it's the Headless Horseman. You get to dress up as a cat, uh, a bear, and something else. Sounds odd, but it'll make sense when you play. <laughs> have you seen and or tried Fortnite yet? Yes. The battle royale you're talking about, right? Yeah, the not the the game proper zombie either. survival thing. Yeah, the, the game proper the zombie either. survival thing. No one's gonna touch that. Yeah, but they they rolled out the uh, microtransactions now. Oh yeah, people are already belly belly aching about it. I'm not upset about them because they're all vanity. Yeah, I, I can't. You cannot be upset about just all skin based. DLC or uh, microtransactions because you don't have to buy them. Furthermore, it doesn't change if it's it doesn't a change free the game. If you don't, if it's a free game, it needs to pay for itself somehow. I'd rather have microtransactions than being interrupted constantly by ads or some other shit. Yeah, I've or already put subscription. 40, I put 40 something hours into that game so far. Yep, there you go. It's, it's a worthwhile game if you have. If you don't want to pay for PUBG, if you don't want to play for pay for player unknown battlegrounds, or if you don't want to play what is it, uh King of the Kill. H one Z one. Oh yeah, that game. <laughs> That's still it still exists. I mean it's not it's not Lawbreakers dead, but it's <laughs> Which is a shame because uh, I've heard Nothing but good things about Lawbreakers from people actually play it. I was going to say, if you heard good things from the press, that's because they were paid. There's only 10 people. There were, there were 10 people playing the game yesterday. Gosh. At peak. Yeah. In a multiplayer only game. It's just. It's just well, that's it's all... not Overwatch, no one cares. Well, that's also. That's the, that's the epic game, right? Uh, that's the Cliff Bozinski one. Yeah, is, is, doesn't he still do epic games? Isn't I, that his I thing? I don't know his? if it was epic. I don't think it was epic. I think I thought he went separate with that one. He might have. Because I know uh, the only reason I bring it up because like with epic games, I've noticed in the past with their betas, their their game client is a pain in the ass and by the time you finally like get around to downloading the game you're like ah, i don't even want to bother now that's happened to me a few times so that's the thing there were like i think it was like eight to ten thousand people playing the beta and no one no one came back when it came to full launch no it wasn't epic it was uh boss key productions okay yeah, that's right he did branch off yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah, Boss Key and then published by Nexon. The Korean company. That's an interesting choice. Yeah. 
Uh, they I, you know, they're one of the few like rip off devs that actually makes games I like. Uh, I, lo I love Gunbound, and um, what's the other one? Combat Arms is a great Call of Duty rip off. <laughs> Gunbind's great though. I love that game. They also did uh their their Maple Story, right? Is it next on that Maple Story? I think that's Maple Story. Yeah. That's a big company. But yeah. I like yeah. their stuff. But Fortnite unlike Lawbreakers that just feels like a that from what I've been heard is a bland generic shooter. Fortnite does a pretty good job of kind of standing out from the battle royale games proper like you have it's it's stylized so it automatically visually looks different it's yeah. not the same call of duty realism and it looks like it has more polish in my opinion than PUBG. It's from what i've experienced very it's very polished it's very smooth because it's on a console and I would just, I, to get it to work right on a console, you have to put it in a little bit to a lot more work yeah. to get it to work and feel right. Because I think Overwatch didn't put their focus in on the consoles. And that's why I don't own the game. Yeah. Because it just, it didn't, it didn't feel right. There's better first person shooters on the console than Overwatch. <clears throat> But Fortnite, they they have everything everything done right, and it just it's it's got a style to it, and the whole the building aspect is kind of take it or leave it. But yeah, it's, no one seems to be really into that part. <laughs> the people who win do. Yeah, yeah. The people who win consistently know how to build up little fortresses at the end. Because I mean that's. That's the main point, is you get down to the last 10 people and the circle is about the size of an acre or less. So then you start building up a little fortress and hope not to get ganked before you finish. It's interesting. We're seeing more and more of that mechanic that really I feel like Speedrunners was the first to nail it, where you have the shrinking playable area. So I'm, I, I like to see what developers do with that with future projects. I think there's still more that can be that can happen with that. Cause I feel that's one of the big things that happens is, yeah, we get we have more processing power, so we have we can make huge play playgrounds, right? But if you're spending you know twenty thirty minutes trying to find another player, that's not fun yeah. either. <laughs> it, which it boggles my mind because. I swear I bring this game up like weekly, but Mag was able to do 256 people in the early PlayStation 3 era. 256 people, 128 versus 128 on the PS3. Yep. Why? Why does anyone even accept 64 man matches? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we accept a hundred, a hundred people in this battle royale? That's my big gripe with Destiny Two is we still don't have big team activities. It's so it's such an exclusive experience on so many levels. You know, and I Destiny I just, Two. I, I let hate. Me, let me. I hate having to tell. Let me tell. interrupt. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Destiny Two. Here's the secret. It's Destiny One, but on the PC. Yeah, it's the same lack of content. It's going to be the same shitty PvP focus of just six on six or eight on eight. No, it's four by Death four. Match. It's what? That's what I'm saying. Four by four. When you play, oh, it's even worse. Yeah, dude. Crucible. You can only party up with three other people. Dumbest shit I've ever seen. There's no reason they can't balance it for 6v6 at least. Ridiculous. There's no reason they can't do 8v8v8v8. 
Oh, for like a four, 32 people. Four way battle? Yeah. Yeah, four way battle. Do it. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, you know. So many simple little things they could do, small variants that make have such a huge payoff. I don't get it. What huge payoff? What, what more could they have done? I think Destiny 2 made an ass load of money. Destiny 1 did too. Yeah. And everyone who was on PC was crying about not having Destiny. Now has Destiny. Yeah. All of its flaws. Enjoy. We live in a world where laziness gets rewarded. <laughs> yes, we do. Good times. But anyway, before I go off on that rant, because that's a whole other topic, where can people find you these days, Taylor? You can find me on Twitter, at Beard and Hat. <laughs> I like how you say yeah. Twitter, almost sad. You can find me on Twitter. There's no suitable replacement yet for it. <laughs> Still begrudgingly on, on Twitter? I, I will be on Twitter until they ban my account. <laughs> I don't think they'll ban you, it's just people will start blocking you individually. Like all the devs you keep talking about. I hope. I'm already blocked by so many people. Just keep going until I'm just completely shadow banned. <laughs> so that's it. If you find me on Twitter, block me. That's even better. Good time. That's, that's, that's your goal for the rest of the year. Oh, well, I want to get banned off Twitter. I could do that pretty quick. Mm, mm. But I don't want to lose friends while doing it. Yeah, I don't do that. Twitter's Twitter, pretty, it's still there, useful. There's an, easy, there's an easy way to get banned off Twitter. Just to piss off everyone. <laughs> That's how you get banned off Twitter. You piss everyone off. Oh, speaking of it, I did want to talk about one big headline before we, we sign off. The, so Playboy is doing something earth-shattering. Not that, touching this. Yeah, I know. I know. They're going to have a uh, transgender centerfold. And they've had that same person... Featured before, but it's the first time she will be a, uh, a centerfold. And also to have the uh, Hugh Hefner uh, tribute. Uh, I'm not even going to comment on it. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. If you feel like commenting on it, go for it. Um, I have no problem with it. Tweet uh, me I, your opinions on it, and I'll respond there. <laughs> there you go. Not here. That's your whole work. Uh, I, I know this this would be a polarizing thing, but I did like on the radio this morning. They said uh, they do the, they do the polls, and uh, one of the options was because they they do this thing where if you choose the popular opinion, then you win, right? Um, so then one of the options was Gary Busey uh, heard the news and said, you know, something offensive, and he goes, "Wait, that's her? Oh, okay." <laughs> so. The way they said it much better. You get to be there. Cut me up. It's a location joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I, you know, I bet you a lot of people are like, like, well, you know, the top half ain't bad. <laughs> uh, you're not going. You're you're not going to bait me into this. I'm not saying anything. I know. I know. I know. I'm just gonna leave it there. Uh, I'm Yogizilla on Twitter at Yogizilla. Uh, on Xbox Live. Probably the best places to catch me these days. Of course, uh, tweet us at Geeky Antics. And if you want to join in on any of the fun topics we discussed today, let's see, uh, we talked about the zipper ride uh -huh, at the fair and other things that make you lose your food. Um, we talked about the fun of this uh, the fall season. Uh, let us know what your favorite parts are. Uh, we talked about uh, the Playboy Centerfold right just now. Uh, what else? Fortnite? Uh, Fortnite, you know. Are you one of the ten people playing Lawbreakers right now? Yeah, there you go. Let me know. <laughs> or or how many Walmarts do you have within reasonable di driving distance of you? There you go. Yeah. Um, Any of these questions, tweet them at us. Come into Discord. Come talk. Yeah, and uh, and also we have the voicemail line. Or the, you, you can text us on there as well. 646-801-2149. Again, 646-801-2149. Uh, it takes voicemail and text messages. It's it's it's, it's earth shattering. It's huge, huge. <laughs> you know how everybody's saying huge now. 
Uh, and Bigly. And Bigly, Bigly is a funny one. Bigly always tickles me. That, that's been my favorite, because I always thought he was saying Big League. <laughs> like got, big League? Like you gotta do it Bigly. Major League? Uh, <laughs> big League. Bigly! I thought he just had a New York, I thought he just had a New York accent, you know? <laughs> oh, God. Ah, uh, our president is, if nothing else, entertaining. Yep. Till the nukes start flying. Oh God. <laughs> JK. <laughs> JK North Korea. We were kidding about the nuclear proliferation stuff, man. <laughs> That's funny, right? <laughs> Just wait until China decides to be like, hmm, you're on your own. <laughs> South Korea is just gonna either gonna be an island or it'll just be one Korea. Well, was scary. And all of our grandfathers are hissed because they should have done it back in the fifties. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? Another thing that's scary, and then we'll we'll sign off. But uh, just the thought that China is playing this so smart. They're 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 they're, they're choking all their citizens in smog. So they could take over all our manufacturing. They they have hackers that are stealing intellectual property. So they copy the things that we do here. So they can replace all the companies, all the jobs that we have over here. And we're still giving them jobs on top of it. Pretty scary. And you wonder why I'm a hardline isolationist. Yeah. No, I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Uh, Lock down the borders. Lock everything down. If we can't make it here, we don't need it anymore. <laughs> you know, and, and and it's sad, but we have to be like that to an extent. Uh, I think we're too much of every a big brother. Other, every other country is like that. Yeah. Yeah. We are, as I said. I don't even know how many years ago I came up with it, but we're the drunk father of the world. <laughs> we bust in, we beat the kids' asses, and then we buy them presents to apologize. Oh, man. That's probably going to offend a few people, but it's true. <laughs> That's... You can be offended by it, but look at history. Why do you think... Just Let's just go to World War II. Why do you think the Japanese, after World War II, outpaced the rest of the world when it came to manufacturing in quality and effectiveness? Oh, yeah. La on top of their, laser top focus. Of their already laser focus and commitment to excellence, Yep, which is just uniquely Japanese, uniquely yeah. Asian in general. Like, honestly, when I think of the it 80s was, in particular, all I think is Japanese electronics. That's the Japanese one thing that always stood out. Japanese, Japanese cars. I mean, Hondas today are still just leagues above any other affordable vehicle. Well, and, and, and I would even throw in Toyota in spite of their recent, you know, well, not so recent hiccups. But their 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 marketing style is something that's emulated by a lot of companies and has been yeah. systemized. So even that that stuff, you know, all the Six Sigma and lean manufacturing stuff, it all goes back to Japanese standards. But the reason that they outpaced everything is because after we nuked the fuck out of them, they were given new manufacturing equipment. All of the top-of-the-line manufacturing equipment was sent over there. <laughs> and they began to rebuild. Yeah. And when you give these people who have laser focus and commitment to perfection the best tools, they're going to take right off. Japanese denim is still the best denim you can buy. Yeah. It's got that. That shit's that, expensive. It's got like that softness to it, but it's also made to take a bullet. <laughs> Not literally, but it is 
incredibly. Kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> I, was looking up last night. I was looking up last night to see how many layers of leather jackets it would take to stop a bullet. Like a 50 caliber Desert Eagle. Yeah. It's 48. Jesus. Just figured if you needed if you needed that information to save a life or just now you know. 48. Stop a bullet. Well, uh we should probably you should probably look up and see like a 22 or 9 millimeter, like a more everyday caliber. <laughs> you know. Well, I know a single leather jacket does not stop a 22. Would it at least yeah. slow it down so there's less penetration? Nope. Bullet comes right out the other side. Damn it. What about if it's a thick leather jacket? <laughs> no. Can you put a bullet through a cow? Oh, yeah. That then tells, it's that not tells, gonna... That tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> yep. A cow is slightly thicker than a leather jacket. Yeah. And a bullet's going clean. Even a twenty two. I wonder how yellow fat would impact bullet penetration. It might, it might make a strong case for being fatter. Like, I, I may be unhealthy, but your bullets more? won't get me. <laughs> you'd also, like, I think you'd bleed more from the, uh, from the wound. Because so if the bullet doesn't high clear, blood pressure. <laughs> yeah, even if it doesn't go clear through, you're just going to be a fountain. <laughs> Ah, oh, the things that we end up talking about. See, you can comment on that. Maybe like he had six on that. All of your, all of your comments. Send them. And actually, I I'm did, listening. I did want to mention before we sign off, we did have a question about our experiences with Destiny Two so far. And I was kind of waiting for War Child. I, I like him to be a part of that. Because we know where, where Beard uh, sits on that. <laughs> I will never give Bungie another dime. I don't blame you. I was in the same boat. And then my friend sucked me into joining. Even though I knew it was dumb. But we're having fun together. I still recognize it's... Uh, I'm, supporting a bad, I'm supporting bad behavior. but That's why I don't play Ark anymore. Yeah, yeah. The, the, that the way they handled that, from a business perspective, was pretty shitty. Yep, won't touch it. Yeah. It's sitting in my uh, Steam library. It's actually one of the few games I have. It's one of the only game. It's the only game that I own that I don't have installed on my computer. Damn. But I will tell you what, my friend, you are a man that is, stands by his core values, his principles. I have, yes. no, I have no discipline. <laughs> I will absolutely stand by my principles. To the death. Probably. Yeah. That, Probably. That, that's never come up. <laughs> Probably. Maybe. I guess. <laughs> and with that, folks, we'll see you next week. And we'll probably pick up where, right where we left off. I'd be curious to see uh, who responds to anything, and uh, we'll get into the, the Destiny 2 discussion, too. Uh, I'm going to see where I'm personally at with it after another week with it. Uh, dig into some more of the quote-unquote endgame content. <laughs> you mean I can't, PvP? I can't, <laughs> I can't even say it without giggling like a schoolgirl because it's such a silly notion. Uh, yeah, PvP. Cause you know, I, I gotta say, I do like, I do enjoy the PvP, but it's just sad that that's all the game becomes. Um, yeah. Anyway, we'll see Andy. you guys next week for two thousand, nah, episode two hundred and three. We'll be continuing our celebration, and uh, and our unicorn, our new and improved unicorn poopies. Oh god, that's gonna start again. Fuck. No, I'm kidding. Well, actually, will December. That's the plan. Oh, we're getting close. But I you... promise, <laughs> everyone listening, I will head this up to make sure that it is slightly more focused. 
<laughs> and more concise. We don't need six goddamn months of this next year. Oh, as man. much as Yogi thinks it's funny, I will try to condense it down into three and a half episodes. Oh, man. Mark my words. Okay. I will let you take point on that. Let's see. You have access to the show notes, too. I know I do. Yep. I always feel bad deleting things out of there, but this time I won't. I will. I will do my best. You don't necessarily have to delete. You can restructure. That's all. I'm going to keep everything concise. That's all. It's, it's easy peasy. All right, for real. We're out of here, I folks. Have, I have ideas. <laughs> I have ideas. We'll, we'll talk after. But yeah. All right. Good night, everyone. Or Bye. good morning. Or yeah. Whatever. Morning, night. It's morning somewhere. It's night somewhere. Who knows? I don't know. I'm, I have no concept of time anymore. <laughs> I see you, folks. Bye.